three kinds of ministers that we have today in the body of Christ. Number one, preacher or teacher of ministers are those that are bringing poison to the table. They are those bringing polluted doctrine to the body. Now, right now in the body of Christ, we have those that are teaching poisonous messages causing death. Killing the faith of the people. Making shipwreck the faith of God's children. Knowingly and sometimes unknowingly. These are ministers that are not taught. These are ministers that have not been furnished with the word of life. These are ministers that are half baked. They just understood something small. They took it out of context. And right now, they are feeding the body of Christ with poison. And many churches are eating poison. Thinking they are eating real food. You look at the pattern of prayers in the body of Christ today, you will look at it and say, is this actually the way Jesus taught us to pray? The aspect of giving, the aspect of our faith, there are many polluted messages in the body of Christ now that is being brought by some ministers. I didn't come here this morning to mention names, but big ministries and big ministers, they have made merchandise of the gospel. They are teaching heresies. And thousands are following them. Eating poison. The second set of ministers in the body of Christ. Verse 40 of 2 Kings chapter 4. The second set of ministers had those who tasted this thing in the pot. I'm talking about the poison and the polluted doctrine and teachings and the raised alarm. This teaching is not balanced. <laughs> it's high time we begin to cry out when we hear people teach doctrines that can cause poison. And we need fathers we need ministers of the gospel who will raise our lamp and say, shut up. That's not the way the Bible teaches it. This is the way God is teaching Everybody, The third class had those bringing balance and remedy to the table. They are bringing balance and remedy to the poison and the polluted pot. May the Lord make you one of them. Amen. These are the people that have been taught over the years that have sunk. So they are bringing remedy. You don't need to attack a man for teaching what you don't believe. Teach your own. Go on social media Go on TV. Go on radio. Don't attack Daddy Freeze for preaching against tight. You just start say, well, we are starting a series of messages today on tight thing. Let's see what the Bible teaches. A lot of the people follow him. When they hear you, they will now say, okay, so this is it. You are not even mentioning anybody's name. But you are providing balanced diet 
So when they test it, they know that there is healing here. That was taught in the Bible. There may be more reasons, but I found four major reasons why Elisha refused the offering of Naaman. Number one, the healing of Naaman through the prophetic ministry of Elisha was free. It was free. He was not to be paid for. <laughs> Minister of the gospel, be careful who brings offering to you and you receive. Elisha had needs. But his needs was not to be met that way. Why did Elisha refuse? The items name had brought to Elisha has thanksgiving has been dedicated to the idols of his hometown. So flesh cannot glory itself before God. Number three, according to the scripture, it wasn't time to receive money and gifts. That brings me to the fourth and the final point on this. Elisha refused Naaman's gift because something better is coming. Elisha was a man of the spirit. He was seeing something greater in the spirit. And I will shock you with that. In 2 Kings chapter 8 verses 7 and 9. Your two silver and your two garments is too small compared with what I am seeing ahead of me. If we could see into the future, the Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for me. What is it that you are giving to me that can be compared with 40 cameras. Not telling stories. The church of God has become a storyteller. The politicians are asking us, tell us about Apostle Babanola. Tell us about the late Archbishop Ben Say Dawusa. We see not our signs. No one to work wonders anymore. What we see now are the working of men. No tangible miracle. Neither is there any among us who know how long. Ladies and gentlemen, is two silver and two garments compared with a lifetime of leprosy? Not only for him, but for his generation. God is looking for those that will demonstrate his power. Not those that will be telling stories about the revival of the 60s and the revival of the 70s and the revival of the 80s and the revival of 1930. People are still telling the story of Azusa revival. When we should be repeating it and replicating it in our generation. Lord, in my time, don't let me tell stories. 